had seen in the last lecture design of the knuckle joint and again we had seen the design procedure what are the different steps we have to follow that already we had seen now in this lecture we will try to solve our problem so here is the problem so it is required to design a knuckle joint to connect two circular rods and where the axial force it is of the 50 kN the rods are coaxial and a small amount of angular movement between their axes is permissible and the design the joint and specify the dimensions of the component the material which they are using for this joint they have specified it is 30 c8 and whose syt in the strength it is 400 newton per mm square and here we have to assume the factor of safety as 5 so what you have to do here they have given the load material and the factor of safety for this knuckle joint and we have to design and we have to finalize the dimensions of that so this is the given problem now first we will write down the given data this is the given data so the first they have given the load p it is 50 kN and we will try to convert it to the newton so 50 into 10 raised to 3 newton so that is the load they have given second they have given material 30 c8 so this is the designation of the material so its value syt it is 400 newton per mm square and the third they have given factor of safety it is 5 so this is the first given data now what we will do we will calculate the first the permissible stresses when we are designing we have to find out the permissible stresses whatever the stress they have given syt 400 it is a maximum stress which the material can take but when we are designing we need the permissible stresses so we will find out the permissible stresses so the tensile stress the permissible tensile stress sigma t is equal to what the maximum stress divided by factor of safety so yield strength is maximum here it is 400 divided by factor of safety 5 then you will get 18 newton per mm square that is the permissible tensile stress similarly we will find out the permissible crushing stress again it is yield strength divided by factor of safety so 400 divided by 5 it is again 18 newton per mm square then we will find out the permissible shear stress that is the tau that is equal to the shear stress is always half of the, the tensile stress we say so it is 0.5 syt divided by factor of safety so 0.5 into 400 divided by 5 then you will get the 40 newton per mm square now these are the permissible stresses 18 newton per mm square that is the permissible tensile stress 18 newton per mm square permissible uh, crushing stress and the 40 newton per mm square that is the permissible stress stress so when we are designing we have to use these permissible stresses now we will move to the actual design so the first we have to calculate the diameter of the rod we know that the tensile stress sigma t is equal to load upon area and as the rod is circular then the area it becomes pi by 4 t square now we will put the value because we know the load we know the permissible tensile stress and the only unknown is the diameter d from this we can calculate the diameter so we will put 80 newton per mm square that is the permissible stress and the 50 kN that is the load and we will calculate the diameter d as 28.31 by solving this and after rounding up we will get the diameter nearly about equal to 30 mm so first we calculated the diameter of the rod of this joint now second we will calculate the enlarged diameter d1 right so and that we are finding out from the empirical relation 
so that capital D1 is equal to it is 1.1 capital D so we will put D1 is equal to 1.1 as we calculated the diameter capital D is 30 so that we will put here so by putting that 30 we will get D1 33 and again we will round up this one you can take this 33 but we will always try to uh, take few standard dimension so the nearest value that D1 is equal to near about the 35 mm we will select then we will calculate the dimensions A and B that is the thickness of the high end and the fork end so that we calculate from the again empirical relation A is equal to 0.75 D and therefore A is equal to 0.75 into 30 that is equal to 22.5 then we will round up this we will get A is equal to 25 mm Similarly, we will find out B, it is 1.25 times the capital D, then 1.25 capital D is 30, then we will get 37.5 and we round up this, then we will get the dimension that B nearly equal to 40 mm. So, this two value A and B, we calculated from the empirical relation and we rounded up. Now, we will move to the next part. Here we will calculate the diameter of a pin by the shear. So whatever the pin we are inserting in fork and eye end, so that pin diameter we will find out in that first we are considering the shear stress. So shear stress is equal to load upon the area. So as this pin is under double shear, therefore we are taking twice. So here here we know the shear stress, we know the applied load and the unknown is the small diameter T. So we will put all this value or, uh, after rearranging this then small d equal to you will get under root twice speed divided by pi tau and we will put this value. So 2 as it is T is equal to 15 to 10 raised to 3 and pi as it is and the shear stress allowable shear stress which already we calculated that is the 40. And if we calculate this value, we will get the diameter of the that pin uh, which it will fail by this year. So that diameter will get 28.31. And again, we will round off this value, then we will get the diameter small d is equal to it is 30 mm. Now again, we will find out the diameter of the pin by bending moment, right? So it may fail due to the bending also so that we will calculate here already we calculated by considering this here now we will consider it by the bending so we know the equation bending stress sigma b is equal to 32 pi d cube into p by 2 into in bracket p by 4 plus p by 3 now we know the value bending stress the load b and a all this value we already calculated and the unknown value is small d now if you rearrange this equation then you will get a small d is equal to so cube root of the equation so cube root 32 divided by pi sigma b into p by 2 in bracket p by 4 plus a by 3 now we will put all this value now 32 as it is pi sigma b so here sigma b the value which we are taking that sigma p is equal to uh, sigma t we are taking so here uh, you have to write it as a uh, at value right so here we will write uh, this as a at sigma b value then into 15 to 10 raised to 3 divided by 2 that is the load and the b value we calculated it is 40 divided by 4 plus a value uh, we calculated 25 divided by 3 and if you rearrange this or uh, if you solve this then we will get the diameter small t it is 38.79 and see uh, when we equate to the nearest value then uh, or we round up then we get the diameter small d is equal to 40 mm now you can see we got the two diameter when we consider the shear stress at that time we got the small d diameter of the pin is 30 mm 
and when we consider the bending stress at that time we got diameter 40 mm so when we are selecting the uh, diameters or the dimensions at that time we are always selecting the larger value suppose if we select the diameter 30 mm it can sustain in the shear but when it is failing due to the bending it will definitely fail because uh, to resist the bending failure we need minimum 40 mm uh, right so if you select the 40 then it can sustain in the shear also and it can sustain in the welding also so always we are trying to select the larger dimension so uh, out of these two uh, just now i said the maximum value we are selecting therefore the diameter of the pin we are selecting it as a 40 mm right now uh, we will go to the next the d0 and d1 dimension that we had of the pin and again uh, the outer diameter of the 4k right so that we will find out so d0 is equal to twice d this is again from the empirical relation then uh, d1 is equal to 1.5 times d. so we will put d0 uh, 2 into small d just now we found out now it is 40 so therefore we will get the 80 mm and d1 uh, 1.5 times d and then uh, we will get 1.5 into 40 d1 equal to 60 mm now we got d0 and d1 now we calculated all the dimensions which we required but whatever the thing we did that we consider the tensile stress but whether it can sustain in the crushing and the shear stress that of the fork and the i end that we haven't changed so here we have to check whatever the dimensions we have finalized whether that will sustain in the crushing or whether it can take the crushing load or whether it can take the shear load that we have to verify. So the first sigma t tensile stress is equal to p divided by p in bracket d0 minus d. Now here we have to check this stress. Whatever the dimension we finalized by considering the stress we finalize the dimension but now reverse here we are checking once we finalize the dimension whether the stresses are within the limit. If it is within limit, then we can say the design is safe. Otherwise, we have to redesign, we have to modify the dimensions. So that we are going to check here. So tensile stress we will check first. We know the equation, then we will put the P, it is 50 to 10 raised to 3 Newton, B, it is 40 mm, D0, 80, which we calculated, and small d is 40. Now by calculating this, we will get sigma t is equal to 32.25 newton per mm square now similarly we will check the crushing stress induced in the i end then sigma c is equal to we know the equation p divided by small p into small d we will put the value p 50 into 10 raised to 3 and b and small d are 40 mm so we will put 40 into 40 we will get the crushing stress that 31.25 newton per mm square then again the tau shear stress is equal to the same equation then we will get the shear stress tau is equal to 50 into 10 raised to 3 divided by 40 in bracket 80 minus 40 then we will get again the shear stress uh, 32.25 newton per mm square i think uh, there is somewhat mistake that it should be uh, 31.25 right so there is small correction here is 31.25 now see uh, we calculated the uh, stresses induced in this i end whatever the dimensions we finalized now we will check whether these stresses are within the limit or not right see the allowable the tensile stress it is 80 newton per mm square and whatever the value we got it is less than that of the 80 so obviously this dimension which we are finalized it is same right Similarly, we will check the crushing stress. The allowable crushing stress is 80 Newton per mm square, but with our dimension, the crushing stress it is induced 31.25 Newton per mm square. So again, this stress is less than the allowable. Again, it is safe one. Now we will check the shear stress. The allowable shear stress is what 40 Newton per mm square, and whatever the dimensions we finalize, due to that, the induced stress it is 31. 25 
again this value is less than the allowable so therefore whatever the dimensions we finalized we decided or we calculated it is the safe these dimensions are the safe which can take the given load it can work satisfactorily so similarly we will check the fork end whatever the dimensions we finalized that also we will check so the sigma t is equal to p divided by twice a in bracket d0 minus d we will put all this value and we will get the sigma t that is the tensile stress induced in the fork end it is 25 newton per mm square then sigma c crushing stress in the fork end is equal to p divided by twice a into d so we will put the value p a and d this is p a and this is d then corresponding crushing stress we will get the 25 newton per mm square similarly the shear stress induced in the fork end the using this equation uh, and we will put the value p uh, a d0 and d we will get the shear stress maximum that is 25 newton per mm square now these are the stresses tensile stress crushing stress and the shear stress which are induced by considering these dimensions which we finalize now we will check what are the uh, allowable stress so again sigma t is allowable is 80 and this value is less than the allowable so again it is definitely safe the crushing stress allowable crushing stress is 80 newton per mm square and the induced stress crushing stress is 25 which is less than that of the 80 so again this is the safe stress induced and similarly the shear stress allowable is 40 newton per mm square and we got uh, with the help of this dimension that is 25 newton per mm square this value is less than that of the 40 so again all these stresses which are induced are less than that of the allowable so again the fork end it is same so we can say the all the stresses which we observed are within limit so therefore we say that this design is same once we calculate all these dimensions then we have to draw the figure so this is what the overall figure which we finalize the dimension so here the capital D is 30 mm then capital D1 35 mm then uh, this is uh, the A25 that is B 40 mm then uh, D0 it is 80 mm, then D1 small it is 60 mm. So all these dimensions which now we calculated. I hope you understood the problem. Thank you. See you in the next.